All right. Hi, Daniela. How's it going? Hi, Princess. I'm very well. Thank you. And you? I'm great. Um, so I would love to just jump in um, and learn a bit more about you. Um, if you can do an introduction of who you are, um, what you do currently, and what where you are a lay law scholar. Sure. So I'm Dani, um, and I am from Argentina. I've been in London uh, for five years now. Um, and, you know, my origins are from a working family. And uh, but my mom had a very good education at secondary school. And later I've realized what are the opportunities to continue learning in your life. So that is why I always try to pursue progress and learning new things. And this is why it took me, uh, what took me to, you know, progress and coming to come to London, uh, pursue an MBA, and of course, and then I was presented with the Laylo scholarship opportunity. Nice. So you are doing the Laylo program at LBS, correct? Correct. And what what made you apply to that particular program? So the 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 program at LBS is of course one of the top of the world, uh, and so I I knew that I needed to make a jump in my career. And uh, I try to uh, go for the best. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, but the problem was that I couldn't pay it. Uh, so for me, uh, having the opportunity of the Leilo scholarship was uh, life changing. Um, so that is that is why I am now currently doing the the program uh, because I I got I got offered and uh, assigned. Nice. And so currently you're at Paramount, right? So you're having to balance both of those. So I am at Paramount. Uh, I've been with Paramount for nine years. I joined them in Argentina. Um, it was the first multi-platform team where the business was shifting from traditional TV to streaming. And mm -hmm. Uh, I've been part of the team that launched the first TV everywhere applications and websites in Latin America for Paramount wow. uh, internationally. Um, but after three years of being in Latin America, I wanted to make a work experience in Europe. And uh, fortunately, I got an internal offer. And then is when I moved to London five years ago. I changed teams. I went to a product development role, um, mm -hmm. and then I started to develop applications, streaming applications for the globe, not just wow. for Latin America, but for the US, uh, Europe, and with many different business models that were starting at the time, such as the subscription VOD. Nice. That's incredible. You've done so much. Um, so yeah, congratulations on all your success. I guess my, my next question is, what is your, I guess, biggest challenge or life challenge that you've had to come overcome? You've mentioned that you're from Argentina, from a working class family. Um, yeah, what can you tell us a bit more about your biggest life challenges, how you overcome that, and what did you learn from it? Yeah, sure. So um, actually, the, the decision to move to Europe was uh, was difficult um, because I had to overcome a lot of personal uh, situations. Uh, not only uh, you know what is work related. Uh, my sister had cancer at the time, and mm -hmm. you know at the same time, I, yeah, I had to decide to leave her and to leave my family and friends. <clears throat> but what I've learned is that <clears throat> if you have very clear what is your goal. Uh, you can focus and take the right decisions at every corner right? because there are a lot of, you know, decisions you have to make uh, during this journey. And uh, um, I realized that, for example, I wouldn't heal her. I, I, she wouldn't get uh, better because me staying and, and maybe I could help yeah. her and my family more if I had better opportunities in life. So everything took me to uh, to always try to understand why I was doing this. Um, and uh, it took me three years of, you know, personal reflection and, uh, and 
and also looking for the best opportunity for me and my daughter. Hmm. Oh, wow. You have a daughter? How old is your daughter? Uh, she's 17 and she moved. Wow. Away. She's now 17, but at the time she was 12 years old. Um, and again, you know, it was trying to uh, I mean, organize with her father. They were going to be uh, apart. So, and he supported us um, because also it was a great opportunity for her. Um, mm. But again, you, if you focus and you define a word that will help you, um, you know, understand what you are looking for is much better because everybody understands not only you make the right decisions, but everybody understands what you are trying to achieve and supports yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. That is really inspiring. Thanks for sharing that. Um, I guess along that path of being, you know, encountering a lot of challenges and then overcoming those challenges, what is the most useful or impactful piece of advice that you've been given um, in that situation or, or otherwise? Sure. Um, yeah, in that situation, my former boss, um, who helped me with the move and, and the opportunity, uh, gave me a very important piece of advice, and it was uh, to focus on your daughter, focus on the happiness of the family, because no work-related matters will be uh, useful or you know achievable mm -hmm. if you and your family are not happy. So the first six months, I focused on her, that she would integrate, she would adapt. Um, she was already bilingual. Um, we came to mm. London, no? uh, but and in, when you know she adapted uh, to the school, she started to make friends. And I, I said, uh, it was really, mm -hmm. really a cornerstone for me to to you know to start progressing and to continue progressing and to achieve more. Uh, yeah. So. That's wonderful to hear. Um, and then I guess on the other side of that, what is the worst piece of advice that you've been given? Yeah. But In that case or otherwise. Yeah, <laughs> I tend to forget the, the, the bad advice. Uh, yes. But I remember during the pandemic, um, you know, uh, in Argentina, they were like very enclosed and very, uh, you know, frightened about the situation. And here in London, we had one hour to go outside and walk and do some exercise, you know, in the open mm -hmm. air. And they, they um, my family told me, don't go outside because you will get ill. Um, you will catch the, the COVID. And I didn't pay attention. I tried to at least be one hour outside every day mm -hmm. that is so important and I realized that I feel like many of us realized that during the pandemic how vital like fresh air and being around trees and the environment was to our mental health so yes completely see you on that at that time actually I was in Mexico um and we also only had about an hour in the in the state that I was in to just walk around actually mm -hmm. not an hour you just had to walk to the store and back but yeah um what are your you said sorry at least it, that is something you know go to exactly the that was you know the trip of the day it's exactly I was like every day I have to go to the store <laughs> there's no way I'm missing a day <laughs> um so what are your top three tips that will help someone become a better leader that you just learn in your life yeah sure um so my top one is lead by the example. So no, mm. try not to ask for something that you are not doing or you are not able to do uh, from a personal perspective, from, you know, values perspective. Um, then help others achieve goals. Right? So being a leader is to really make other people thrive. Uh, it's mm. not about yourself. Um, and for that, in order to help, I think others would like have to want to work with you, to be with you. So be someone that others want to be with because mm -hmm. you are inspiring, not because you are telling them what to do. Um, so it's something that needs to go from, from your inside. Mm -hmm. uh, and many times it takes that you need to adapt to others. Uh, because of personality or or specific situations, so uh, 
You need to understand how other people are, what are their needs, and adapt yourself to them um, mm. with humility, right? So, I mean, yes, that is important. Thank you for sharing those tips. It's very, very helpful. Um, and then now, I know that you touched upon this briefly, but I uh, would love to hear a bit more. What does it mean to you to be a lay law scholar? Um, yeah, like what, what do you envision for that? Or like, what is that? What connection do you have when you think about lay law scholarship program? Sure. Um, to me, it, it's opportunity. Um, mm. But apart from that, it's like being part of a bigger thing. Thing with with history, um, form of different shapes, uh, different stories, different people. Um, I like the metaphor of you know this um, being a bulb uh, in a string of fairy lights. Ah, uh, I've never heard that before. Because you know different colors, different shapes. Everybody mm. shines, uh, and. You know, I had the pleasure to meet uh, many scholars in, in the events you guys prepare. And it was so inspiring to see so many young women uh, progressing and all the plans they have for the future. And you see the potential. Uh, so this is a strong, it's a strong group. Uh, so the this this diverse network is, is I think is means means for me, right? Apart from the personal goal of, you know, completely completing the EMBA. Um, yeah. Like being part of this, of this bigger thing. It's it's feel great for this. Yes. I wholeheartedly agree with you. Someone reached out to me the other day um via LinkedIn and asked to chat because they applied to the the Lay Law Scholarship program at at Oxford. And um and yeah they were asking me like what was something that really stood out to you about the program. And I said the sense of community and just how inspiring every single person is. And yet they all come from different backgrounds, different unique career paths and personal paths. And it's really incredible to get all those type of, um, that type of diversity of thought, of perspectives of people in one room or in one setting. So completely agree with you on that. Um, when you think of a leader that inspires you or someone that inspires you in your journey, who comes to mind? You know, I I thought about this one, and um, it's 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 difficult to find a perfect person, right? It's, no, nobody's perfect, and nobody will be. But if mm -hmm. I had to choose someone now, I would say Diego Armando Maradona. Uh, he's a footballer. Uh, he's not. Oh. He's not perfect at all. He's an Argentinian footballer. And um, from very early age, he wanted to win the World Cup. And uh, he's a, from a very, very uh, difficult area from Buenos Aires, very poor. And mm. he ended up, you know, completely and, um, you know, achieving his dreams. Mm. Um, and being one of the most important footballers of all time and making millions of people uh, happy out of, you know, winning the World Cup, winning, you know, championships. And, yeah. and these people are sometimes people that don't have anything in life. And the only mm -hmm. uh, happiness comes from, I don't know, a football match result. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's... I'm not sure if his life is inspiring in all sense, uh, mm -hmm. but um, I think he personally achieved something that he wanted from very early age, uh, coming from a very difficult situation. And in his journey, he made millions of people happy around the world in Argentina and in Italy. And yeah. Yeah, that's it's incredible. Fun. And like you said, like no, no human is perfect. And that's something that uh, Susanna in her leadership lab uh, interviews the different leaders across education, business, politics. That's something that she likes to emphasize. And that's the reason why she started that series is to discuss um, leaders and the complexities and the nuances that exist there and how people can be inspiring and do great things and, and inspire others. And yet not be perfect uh, beings. Like we're all striving to, to do better and life is a journey. So yeah, that's a really beautiful example. 
And now when you think about your vision of the future, I would love to hear kind of a scene from the future that you are striving to create. Sure. So um, being a female leader um, is not easy. And so the future I would like to see is this gender pay gap uh, being uh, smaller. Mm. Um, the way I think that will happen is if women progress in a sustainable way, supporting each other uh, mm. across you know all levels, meaning you just don't support your colleague or your subordinates. You also support your manager. Mm -hmm. So supporting women uh, all around, um, I think will make us progress in a sustainable way and try to achieve uh, disparity, uh, disparity, not disparity. Mm -hmm. And um, also being more equal, 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 trying to get more equality at home. Mm -hmm. So to divide uh, everything that's is in regards to the households. Mm. Um, still, uh, we have to, you know, take care of the household, and mm. uh, that is a problem for when we have to give everything at work. Yes, that is a that is a pain, and that is a problem that we need to change. And it's it's not coming from outside, so we need to change that. Oh, and I mean, yeah. because I think it's slightly and slowly changing, but we need to um, to accelerate because if I'm not mistaken, to achieve gender parity at this rate, it will take 130 years. Wow. So we might not see it. We won't see it. So we need to mm. find the way to accelerate that that pace. Yeah, that is a wild number. Um, so yeah, let's we definitely need to accelerate way past um way sooner than 130 years for sure. Um okay, so now we have heard your wonderful story. Now we want to do a little round of quick fire questions just to get to know um what you find for fun and like what you like to listen to and things of that nature. So are you ready? Yep. All right, perfect. So, show or movie, well, TV show that you're currently binging. So, um, currently I don't have much time for binging, but um, I've seen a movie that I liked very much, which is Ferrari, the bio oh. it's a car maker. And um, yeah, so I've now I'm a fan of uh, Ferrari. I love the way that they changed the, the whole industry. Um, yeah, it's a, Is it a documentary. It's a biopic. Oh, I've never heard of it. Yeah. I'm have to add that to my list. All right. Um, what is your like jam, your song, your anthem? Oh, um, I have two love songs. Uh both for by Blondie. Uh one is okay. Heart of Glass and the other one is Maria. Mm, I don't think I've heard either of those. Are they like I'm sure you have, yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah. the ones you you dance on in the kitchen while cooking and uh, ah yeah. okay yeah I probably have I just need to listen to the yes. song and I probably it'll come to mind. Heart of what glass. What about heart, heart of glass? You said especially. Yes. Okay. All right. I'm gonna listen to this as soon as we're done talking. <laughs> um, what is your top book recommendation? Yeah. Um, the book that uh really struck me was thinking. Fast and Slow mm -hmm. by Daniel Kahneman. Um, it's a very, very important book about biases mm -hmm. and how our mind works. Um, he won the Nobel Prize for, for the investigations along with a colleague. And it's I think it's so fundamental to be aware of our biases that that's mm -hmm. It should be learned at school, to be honest. Um, so if you Absolutely. had a chance. I yeah. love that book. And I teach uh, courses sometimes at Oxford. And that is like one of the 
case studies, I used his um, like bias uh, methodology or like framework to like go through each one with the students and do some case studies with that. And it is really eye opening. So yeah, second that um, is definitely a great book. Um, what about your podcast obsession? Yeah, so I've um, listened to most of the episodes of, episodes of Masters of Scale, uh, mm. hosted by Reid Hoffman. He's uh, yeah. one of the co-founders of LinkedIn, I think. Um, mm -hmm. So he interviews uh, entrepreneurs, and uh, it's very, very interesting. I've learned so much about different ways to create a company, to scale these companies and, and to overcome the problems uh, that you know you have in the way. Yes, I started listening to that podcast a long time ago and I actually need, I forgot all, all about it. So I need to actually add that to my train ride playlist because I'm always trying to listen to something. Um, okay, so the last quick fire question and question overall is, Something that made you feel joy recently? Yeah, I won a tennis match. Uh, oh, congratulations. I'm a tennis player, uh, of course, very uh, intermediate, uh, but something that brings me joy, just playing, but winning is like an extra yeah. uh, topping. That is, was the match here in London? Was it yes. somewhere else? Yeah, it was in London. Yeah, a doubles match. You do doubles or sing? Oh, doubles. you said doubles. doubles ah, yeah. okay. Okay. <laughs> so I was just trying to show off my knowledge. I was like, doubles or single? <laughs> That's sweet. really cool. Yes. And it's a great workout too. Yeah, true. I used to take uh, tennis lessons as a child and I'm always saying I need to like, that's something I need to do this summer is get back into tennis because I suck now, but I'm like, if I just practice, I can get back into it. Yeah, exactly. It takes practice. Uh, yeah. But it's a lot yeah. of fun. Nice. Yeah, it is. Um, okay, so just to close out, would you like to plug anything, um, like a cause or any project that you're working on or even your social media accounts? Sure. Um, so I encourage people to reach out to me in LinkedIn if if they want a, a coffee chat or, you know, any advice. Nice. Um, I might at some point take uh, some mentees in the future when I have a little bit more time. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm, I'm quite open to to meeting new people and, and helping in, in, in some some other courses that you might want. Um, so, yeah. That um, is awesome. Yeah. If you if you put then the my LinkedIn profile in this, in yes. this it's, uh, it will be helpful. Perfect. We'll do. Thank you so much. This has been a really like inspiring conversation. Thank you for sharing like your family story and, and very intimate things about yourself. And yeah, it's, it's very inspiring to see not just like how incredible you are professionally, but how much you've overcome personally and, and yeah, how you're also willing to pay it forward to others through mentorship and things of that nature. So thank you so much. Well, thank you, Princess, for this space and uh, continue doing what you do. It's amazing. It's an amazing job. Thank you. Thank All you. right, everyone. Uh, we'll see you the next spotlight. Thank you for joining us and have a great day.